Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to gaming with me, Tony Moe. And as you guys can tell, we're here today to open a giant, a giant crate that has the Inferno Squad logo on it. It's a Star Wars Battlefront 2 themed crate from Logitech. It's the best way I can put it. Logitech was kind enough to send me some free loot, asking if I could do something with it. And so here I am doing an unboxing, which is not something I normally do on the channel. I've also gotten a Reese involved because everything's better when you have a doggo around. I think you guys will all agree. So really, what we're going to do today is we're going to unbox this. We're going to take a look and see what's inside, see what Logitech has sent me. And I'm also going to spend some time updating you guys on my current thoughts on the state of Star Wars Battlefront 2. I feel like this is the perfect time to do that. Honestly, it's a discussion I've been asked a lot about over the past two weeks, especially since they removed the ability to buy the crates within Star Wars Battlefront 2. And it's something I feel like we definitely need to talk about, because there's a lot of things to be said about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Things I was saying before they even removed the ability to purchase those microtransactions. Things that are now even more glaringly an issue with Star Wars Battlefront 2, now that that hoo-ha has been not really pushed out of the way, but essentially dealt with. The community won. The community spoke with their wallets, and they also spoke very loudly over on Reddit with some downvotes. And I think we proved that we don't really need the government to intervene, and we sh in my opinion, we don't want the government to intervene. I don't want the government intervening with video games. The government can barely take care of the things they're supposed to take care of. You know, when was the last time the government actually put regulations in place to help people with health care and all of the other things, especially here in the United States. We have the worst health care system in the world. It's, it's not good. <laughs> we're, we're lagging behind in a lot of areas, and that's definitely one of them. The last thing I want is the government that claims, more often than not blindly, especially the politicians, that violent games make violent people. You know, they, they put everything on all of the issues that are just scapegoats for them, right? I don't need them regulating our video games. That's my opinion. I think we did a good job showing that when we speak out against an issue that we disagree with heavily, things get changed. And that's exactly what happened with Star Wars Battlefront 2. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. Big old Plano crate. Which I'm actually more stoked about the box, because I've always wanted a Plano crate to store my airsoft stuff in, not just a bunch of separate cases. So when this is all said and done, Let's just say all the airsoft stuff is going here. So they sent me a copy of the game on PC. We got a nice little pin in there. We got a bunch of stickers. And he says like, what's all this red stuff? Can I eat this? Star Wars Battlefront 2 sticker. Lucasfilms, Dice, and EA vinyl all in one. We'll probably burn two of those and keep one of those. I think you all know which one I'm talking about. Uh, more Star Wars stickers, Inferno Squad. Got the Logitech logo. And then we've actually got the stuff. So we've got a nice little vinyl here, which I already opened because I wanted to be able to actually show it to you guys. A little Star Wars Stormtrooper helmet there. They're basically all like RT themed vinyls, which are pretty cool. There's a couple different ones you can get your hands on. And then we actually got all the Logitech stuff in here. So we've got a G810 Orion RGB keyboard. Again, all Star Wars Battlefront 2 themed stuff. The cool thing about this is it's just a box from Logitech. You know, uh, obviously the Star Wars Battlefront 2 theme is promotional as F, but uh, Logitech stuff's always kick ass. We've got a GA40. This is a super large mouse mat, and I will show you guys what all this stuff looks like. We've got a wireless G703 mouse, which I'm actually super stoked about this mouse because I would really like to have a second mouse that is wireless um, for some things I'm going to be doing in the future with my PC. And uh, Logitech makes killer mice. In fact, I almost bought that exact shape, but I ended up going with my Steel Series. We've got a wireless G933 gaming headset. I think this has also got some RGB stuff on it. This isn't like surround sound. I think this is just, oh, it is, sorry. 7.1 surround sound. I thought it was just stereo. And uh, that's it. The rest of the stuff's just a massive pile of red confetti that New Reese totally wants to dive into right now. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of this stuff and talk Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, one of the things I want to point out is that well before the whole loot crate debacle went down, specifically with EA and Star Wars Battlefront 2, I was kind of under the impression that they did a pretty shitty job uh, monetizing Star Wars Battlefront 2. Like, there's good microtransactions, and I don't mean, like, good as in morally good. I mean as good as in, like, people actually want to buy them. And then there are shitty ones. And interestingly enough, there was a free-to-play developer whose entire livelihood is based around 
designing microtransactions for free to play games on mobile and he came out and was just like no one was gonna buy the no one was gonna buy the crates anyways and I kept saying that you know I couldn't even see people they basically the idea of a, of a free to play game with microtransactions is that a small majority of the audience right is supposed to buy those microtransactions and keep the game free or the content release is free for everybody else in a free to play game that's how it works here's the mouse by the way Got the Inferno Squad logo on there. Basically what you have here is a really kick-ass Logitech mouse that happens to be wireless. So I'm actually really stoked about that. Um, it's got weight with it as well, in case you want to make it heavier and all that nonsense. Let's put that on the side. Um, you know, you, you want those that small majority to be buying the microtransactions, but I just couldn't see a reason to. You know, I think most of the people were playing the game like... The problem with the system was that you had something that statistically was pay to win, but also carried very little value for most players, you know? Like, there's just no reason to buy them. So I think it was a shit system to begin with. And then on top of the feedback, you know, it was a change that they made. So there we go, more Inferno Squad logos. You can see they're heavily using that throughout all of this stuff. Um, mechanical keyboard, obviously. I've always liked the roller that Logitech has here for, you know, some of their volume control stuff. I, I don't know, I just, I, I like Logitech keyboards. I'm obsessed with my Corsair Strike though, especially because it has the silent uh, mechanical keys in it, which is killer, by the way, um, especially if you're doing a lot of recording and stuff like that. So yeah, I always felt like the system was pretty shit, you know? And the biggest thing that we're now left with, now that that is gone, is realizing that not only did people probably not want to buy the crates, nor were they probably ever going to make any real substantial money off it long term, but we're left with that progression system that I talked about on stream numerous times, which is one of the worst progression systems in a first person, in a game period. It was entirely designed around the concept of enabling people to purchase crates, right? And therefore, now that that is gone, which probably wasn't going to work in the first place, you just have a really shitty progression system that it has almost no reward for the player. Inferno Squad again, locked and loaded, wireless. Wireless headsets are massive. I'm not a huge fan of them. I like lightweight stuff, but these are actually not that heavy. Not as lightweight as my as my, um, as my current headset, but nonetheless, pretty cool. Looks cool, you know, Star Wars branded stuff. Branded stuff's always cool. Logitech does a good job with branded stuff. I have to say I'm not usually the biggest fan of things that are like branded with game stuff on them. Um, just because sometimes I feel like they're really kind of gaudy, but the stuff looks pretty good. The Inferno Squad logo is pretty chill, so I will say they've done a good job with that. And, uh, look at that. It's as big as the crate. <laughs> I've got a pretty large Corsair mouse mat. But this is taking things to a whole new level. This is like keyboard length, mouse mat. This thing is going to be the thing about a good a good mouse mat, one that gets used often. Let me show you guys what mine looks like. Is that you end up with this? It's just impossible, right? It's all the little bits and pieces that end up scraped on your mouse mat, and it just turns it white. That thing will eventually look like that, which is why I don't use like full size mouse mats typically. But nonetheless, a lot of cool loot. Uh, to finish off the Star Wars Battlefront discussion, you know, we've, we're left with this progression system that is just... It's an atrocious mess, guys. I have no idea what DICE is going to do with it. Here's the thing that kills me. Let me just speak about Battlefront 2 directly from a gameplay standpoint. Directly from the game that DICE has created. It really is, in my opinion, a masterclass in what you can do from an audiovisual standpoint. It is a beautiful, beautiful game. It sounds incredible. I think they did a good job with the weapon feel this time around. I've spoken very highly of it on stream. It's a fun game to play, but it has so many flaws that are then presented because of the progression system. It's baked into every little facet. In fact, it's even baked into how the heroes play out and how the stuff plays out. You can tell all of it was influenced by that crate system. It kills so much of the heart that could have made an amazing Star Wars game. And that, 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 that sucks so much for DICE and for the development team, because Star Wars Battlefront 2, when compared to Battlefront 1, from a gameplay, from an audiovisual design perspective, is it leaps and bounds ahead. It's like they went all the way in to make the best possible Star Wars game they could, and then it was just plagued with nonsense. You know, the, the fact that Arcade is clearly limited because they wanted people to not be able to earn too many credits to get these crates. Like, the progression system just sucks so much tauntaun ass uh, and it spoils a fantastic project that DICE probably spent so many hours on you know so much effort to get things just right to be like this is the best Star Wars game we've ever made and then EA just shows up and slaps him in the face with a pile of dog shit and says here's some loot crates make it work so 
That's how I feel about the current state of Battlefront 2. I think it's a very sad tale. I think it's fantastic that the gaming community spoke out like they did and got the change that they got. But I think at the end of the day, EA walks away as a corporation and maybe loses a few million dollars, no big deal for them. Whereas the development team at DICE is probably left being the ones that were really hurt at the end of the day. As gamers, we move on. There's other games to play. They poured thousands of hours into this project. And who knows how the reputation of DICE is going to be affected by this. I hope not nearly as much as EA's has further been tarnished. Because I don't think DICE deserves that. But I think that's a crying shame at the end of the day. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Logitech, thank you guys so much for sending me some free loot. No idea what I'm going to do with this stuff just yet, guys. I think after the new year, we might make some plans to give some of this away. Because I don't need all of this stuff. Why well, I'd like to use the mouse. I don't need a mouse mat. So keep an eye out for the future. We'll probably do some stuff with this great content. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, not a normal video, but hopefully we got some good discussion in there. And I'd love to hear your current thoughts on the state of Battlefront 2 as it exists now. How do you feel about the progression system? How do you feel about the game if you've been playing it or at least keeping an eye on it? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm having some trouble with my PC right now. It took me like five PC crashes to get this video rendered out. I guarantee that's how many it's going to take. I'm estimating it right now. We'll see. <laughs> but I do have a new CPU, a new motherboard on the way. So uh, we'll be getting back to streaming in the next couple days and finally launching the first episode of the reboot of what was once the weekly and is now something very different. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, Narice. Say goodbye. I'll see you guys in the next one.